On Wednesday, we had our sign up meetings. If you want to find out what happened, stay tuned. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Razor Ruzzelli. I'm the director of undergraduate education here at the School of Dentistry, University of Manchester. Uh, on Wednesday, we had our sign-up meeting to discuss all our students in the BDS and BSc OHS programs and to check that they have uh, completed or nearly completing all the requirements for their summative exams. Um, so what we normally do is we have got uh, quite a very large uh, Excel spreadsheet of a variety of different data um, which we all look at as, as a team uh, to find out what data we normally look at. All you have to do is go on your blackboard and download the handbook of assessment and everything you need is definitely written there. So on the positive side, uh, many of you guys have managed to successfully be signed up uh, to uh, sit your upcoming exams. Some of you also got a letter that you got a few pending little things which you have to go ahead and do. They're called requirements for a reason. So you have to make sure you uh, complete your requirements by uh, the deadline. Having said that though, however, uh, a, a few of you uh, we were not sure about um, the data which you were seeing. We are hoping that you probably have got a pile of milestones and you just simply forgotten to bring them to the dental school and hand them in. And that's why we don't have as many uh, of them already completed against your name. So some of you are invited to come to the SDRP meeting next week. And that's really an opportunity for you to clarify the points which you're not 100% sure whether you've done enough or not. So from now until next week, if you do have pending stuff, which there are somewhere down the pipeline and you just simply hadn't had the time to complete them or hand them in, just do them, get them all out of your way. So very soon we will have one of our new tutors starting with us. Uh, I'm just going to invite you to join me with a very short interview uh, to see who your new tutor is. Right. So what I've got today is one of our very own previous students, Dr. Ben Trill. Ben, thank you very much for coming and joining us. Pleasure. Especially, thank you to, uh, for, for, for agreeing to come to Manchester Mollers and be in front of the camera. Uh, so Ben is going to start uh, with us um, early April um, in 2020. So we're looking forward to welcoming him officially on our clinics. But whilst Ben was here, I just took the opportunity to invite him and ask him a few questions, if that's okay, Ben. Of course. So Ben, you were one of our students here. So first yeah. of all, tell us how many years ago it was that you qualified? Um, I graduated three years ago. Okay, excellent. You are still a general dental practitioner. Yes, I am. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your experience here in Manchester. How did you find being a student? I really enjoyed being a student here. There's a lot to do in, in Manchester. Um, in terms of the course, it was uh, very insightful. I, I always say, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the inquiry-based learning approaches. Um, I think it's it's very good and very applicable to general dental practice because it's a case of not one blueprint fits all, um, a textbook approach to patients. It gives you the skills to problem solve, take a clinical issue and to find a solution to it. Thank you. And I'm sure everybody who's watching this now wants to know as a Manchester graduate, how did you find the real world? I found it very interesting. It's very, it's very different. I think in, in Manchester, uh, when you're working in a hospital environment, you're very protected and cocooned. And when you, you, you go out into practice, you've got to be able to, you're a lot more independent. Um, sure, you do have support from various colleagues, uh, but you do develop when you're out in practice. Uh, particularly in foundation dentistry, it's, it's very enjoyable. You'll find that there is a, a big growth curve in, in your general dentistry. Um, and you start to develop an interest in certain areas of dentistry. Um, you know, I was surprised. I, I never thought I'd, I'd enjoy endo. Uh, and I've, I've started to enjoy it. I also thought that I would never enjoy orthodontics, but I've started to do short-term orthodontics. So it has, has been a... a you know, it's been fun. All right, that's great to know. Now, Ben, could I please also ask why you're coming back to Manchester? Um, it, it's like coming back home. Um, I really, really enjoyed it here. The, the staff are lovely. Um, everyone's exceptionally, uh, you know, approachable. 
um, and the, there is a, a real camaraderie amongst the team. So uh, yeah, I, I, you oh, know, that's it, very good to know. Without hesitation, I, was, I wanted to come back here. Excellent. I'm sure everybody is uh, looking forward to welcoming you very soon. And one final question for our final year BDS students, because they're getting very close to their final exams. They're all panicking about their IPC cases, their requirements, their write-ups, and most importantly, the exams. Mm -hmm. Have you got any advice for them? Because you've been through all of this a few well, years ago. It's quite fresh. Uh, actually, I would say, um, first and foremost, make sure you have a lot of sleep. Uh, make sure that you are fresh. I would say with regards to your IPC cases, make sure that you know exactly why you have, have done what you've done on those patients. Um, with regards to examinations, it, it's just a case of, of, of obviously making sure you revise as best as you can. Um, but at the same time having breaks because you can quickly become saturated with, with information and, and, and just, just to relax I would say and, and uh, you know everyone wants you to succeed. Um, you know, everyone's not out to get you. Um, but yeah, I think that's what, what it would be, really. Right, thank you very much, Beth. Thank you for your time. And we, will shall, we shall see you in the first week of April. Absolutely. Now, I'm sure that all the media at the moment is full of coronavirus, uh, so COVID-19. Um, we are essentially on the same boat as all of you guys, and we're just trying to follow whatever government publishes. And as you probably noticed, uh, things get updated very, very rapidly. One of the most frequent questions we get is what to do in the event that you are dealing with somebody who might be suspicious of having coronavirus. Our nursing team uh, on the uh, trust side have been very busy putting together a, a very helpful flowchart. We're going to be sending that flowchart uh, to all our students and our staff as well as mounting a few hard uh, copied ones everywhere on the walls and the clinics uh, for you guys to just simply follow the instructions over there. The second most commonly as question we get um, is with Easter approaching what's going to happen in terms of traveling uh, abroad um, so if you please uh, look at the announcement which I put on Blackboard on Wednesday uh, it's got a section in terms of uh, what to do if you are planning to travel uh, we are also going to send you a, a little form that you have to uh, fill in and let uh, Simon have a copy of that the third frequently question we get is in regards to the continuity of business are we going to shut down and close uh, or not now, to be honest, if I could predict the future, I would be a very, very rich man. It's not the case. Um, so we just go along uh, and we just wait for governmental announcements and see what they would like us to do. As we stand, um, everything is going to continue as normal and the business is as usual. So we are still coming to work and we're still continuing with uh, our teaching and learning and looking after our patients. But if things change, which may change rapidly, then we are all on the same boat as you guys. So at the moment, behind the scene, we are very busy trying to come up with contingency plans in terms of like continuity of your teaching and learning and in terms of your exams, which I'm sure you're all worried about. Uh, but we are not doing that in isolation. We are in active communication with the Dental School Council as well as the Dental School Council Assessment Alliance. And we're just following the best practice and we're just sharing uh, ideas and contingency plans which we've got as not only our institution but also uh, all the dental institutions within UK so rest assured we are on your side we would do whatever we can do in our power to make sure that you're not disadvantaged in any shape or any form so with that just a little quick reminder that since coronavirus is spreading around don't forget that you have to keep your personal hygiene really, really high wash your hands as always do anyway and finally the most important thing is as a community we have to stay united and responsible for health and safety of our people at the end of the day we are protectors of the public we are healthcare professionals and we have to stay quite careful 
that although we are at the moment young and healthy and even if we acquire the virus we may not show that many symptoms but we can potentially become active carriers and then we can transfer this quite serious disease to those people who do not have good immune system so if by any chance you have been confirmed God forbid, to have the virus and you're required to stay home or you fit within the NHS criteria of somebody who has to go ahead and self-isolate, please do so. I'm sure that you're gonna be fine, but we have to be very responsible for the public and for the patient. So with that, stay safe and healthy. I've been Rosa Ritzeri, you've been amazing, and I'll see you next week.